In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate a hypothesis test for a single proportion. And how we're going to do this is we're going to follow each of those five steps that are listed in the notes. So let's first look at the example. It says a recent television commercial claims that 9 out of 10 dentists recommend a particular brand of whitening toothpaste. We will test the claim that the commercial is wrong and less than 9 out of 10 dentists recommend a particular brand of whitening toothpaste. A random sample of 100 dentists is obtained. Of those 100 dentists, 82 indicate they recommend the toothpaste. Use alpha equal 0.05. So before we start the process, let's just identify some of the information that is in the scenario. So first of all, notice our, our data that we're working with, um, we took a sample of 100 dentists. So if we had a sample of 100 dentists, that tells me that n, my sample size is equal to 100. And then notice for each of these 100 dentists, we're asking them yes or no, do you recommend this toothpaste? So that's categorical data, so that's how we know we're working with proportions. And we know that out of those 100, 82 indicated they recommend the toothpaste. So if you take 82 divided by 100, that's going to give you 0 0.82. So that's our statistic. And then the new thing we're working with is notice they say we're going to test the claim that the commercial is wrong and less and not less than 9 out of 10 recommend. So that part that we're testing, that value, that's the value that's going to go in our hypotheses. And so that tells me that P naught is equal to 9 divided by 10, which is 0 0.90. So once we've identified these three things, we're going to kind of put a box around them. We're going to need these as we work throughout, so that's why it's a good idea to identify them first. So the first thing we're going to do is our sample size check. Now when you worked with confidence intervals and you did your sample size check, you would check n times p hat. With hypothesis test, we're going to check against p naught. So just to kind of write out what we're checking here, we're checking that n times p naught is bigger than 10, and we're also going to check that n times 1, p, 1 minus p naught is also bigger than or equal to 10. All right, so n in this case is 100, so if we take 100 times p naught, so that's 0 0.90, well, that's going to be equal to 90, and 90 is definitely bigger than or equal to 10. And then if we take 100 again, that's our n times 1 minus our 0 0.90. That's going to be equal to 10. And 10 is also bigger than or equal to 10. So our, we have satisfied the requirements. Right, so our next step that we need to do is we need to write out our hypotheses. And you had practiced this in the last module. And so you saw when writing out your hypotheses, you always write out your null and then your alternative. So now we need to identify what each of these are. So notice we're testing the claim that the commercial is wrong and less than 9 out of 10 dentists recommend. So in other words, we're testing the claim that the population proportion is less than 9 out of 10, which is the same thing as 0 0.90. So then in the null, we're going to set the population proportion equal to 0 0.90. Now next, we're going to calculate our test statistic. When working with a hypothesis test for a proportion, our test statistic is denoted by the letter Z. And the formula we're going to have is P naught minus P naught divided by the square root of P naught, 1 minus P naught divided by N. And so this is why it's handy if we go ahead and identify these three pieces up here, because now we can just fill in our formula. So our p hat rather is 0 0.082 minus the p naught of 0 0.90, and 
And then in the denominator, we're going to have the square root of 0 0.90 times 1 minus 0 0.90 divided by 100. All right? So we're going to do this um, just one step at a time. First, we're going to take the 0 0.82 minus the 0 0.90. And so that is going to give us negative 0 0.08. So there's our numerator. And generally, you want to take these out to four decimal places. So now in your calculator, you're going to want to put in the denominator. So we're going to have the square root of 0.9 times 1 minus 0.9 which is 0.1, divided by 100. And again, you'll want to take this out to four decimal places, but in this case, it's a, you know, it stops at two. So we could put the trailing zeros if we wanted, but it really doesn't make a difference. That is a zero there. So now in my calculator, I'm going to put in negative 0.08, divide it by 0 0.03, and that is going to give me negative, and you're always going to round this last bit to two decimal places, that's a 2.67. So again, always round your test statistic to two decimal places. So next, we need to find the p-value. The work that you did in module seven working with the normal curve is gonna come in really handy for finding the p-value. So what you're gonna do since we're working with a z is we could draw a standard normal. And so remember that standard normals are always centered at zero. Notice our test statistic is negative 2.67, so I'm gonna draw my test statistic in here. And then the p-value is going to be the area under this curve. So notice we have a left tail test here. So I'm going to color in the area to the left of the test statistic. Now how did I know that we had a left tail test? You can always use your alternative hypothesis to tell you what tail you're in. And the easiest way to remember this is, so notice in this case we had a less than sign in our alternative hypothesis. I could make that very easily look like a arrow pointing to the left. So that's a left tail test. Now let's say instead we had had a greater than symbol in the alternative. Well notice it kind of looks like an arrow that points to the right, so that would be a right tail test. Or alternatively, you could have a not equal to, and that's going to mean it's a two tail test. But for this example, we have a left tail test, so I know I need this area under the curve. Well, we've already found areas under the curve using um, standard normal distributions, but let's just kind of review how we do this. We're going to use our standard normal table. So we go to our, oops, sorry about that. We go to our standard normal table. So looking at our standard normal table, I'm going to bring it up here. Remember that we want the area to the left of negative 2.67. So what I can do is find negative 2.67 on my table. So here's negative 2.6. And here's the 7. So I find where those line up. And the table always tells me the area to the left of a point, so I don't need to do any extra work. So this tells me the area to the left of that point is 0 0.0038. So going back, this area right here is 0 0.0038. Well, that area is the p-value. So using the normal table, the p-value equals 0 0.0038. Eight. Okay, now remember all the way back up here at the top, 
we were going to use alpha of 0 0.05. So our p-value, which is equal to 0 0.0038, is less than alpha equals 0 0.05. And so now our very last thing we can do is write our conclusion. So while you're working on your homework, it's a good idea you're going to structure these problems just like I'm doing in this video. Label each of your five steps, and then as you move through them, that way you'll know you're getting each of the pieces of information that you need to include. So now our conclusion, and these are just like the conclusions that you wrote in module 11. So we're going to have at the 5% significance level, and we know we have 5% significance because alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And further, since our p-value is less than alpha, that means we have evidence against the null hypothesis. So we're able to conclude the alternative. So at the 5% significance level, we have enough evidence to conclude less than 90% of dentists recommend the toothpaste. So these are the same types of conclusions that you wrote in module 11. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at how to do the same thing, except we're going to work with a single mean.